The people of the Niger Delta, who relied mainly on agriculture as a means of livelihood before the discovery of crude oil in their soil, are predominantly based in what is now southern Nigeria. In 1956, crude oil was found in a surprisingly large quantity within the region, and since then, it has been a source of concern whether to regard it as a blessing or a curse. This is because, on the one hand, the discovery led to the oil boom in Nigeria, thus enhancing economic growth, employment opportunities, infrastructural development, and ultimately the country's greatest source of revenue for many years now. On the other hand, however, the discovery left Nigeria with adverse effects to mention but a few. General environmental degradation, soil impoverishment, pollution, loss of human and aquatic life, biodiversity, and others too numerous to mention. In this video, we shall take a look at how crude oil was discovered in Nigeria and of course, a history of bloodshed, poverty and pollution in the Niger Delta. As earlier stated, agriculture was the major source of Nigeria's foreign exchange earnings through the exportation of cash crops such as rubber from the southern region. Groundnuts, hide and skin from the north, cocoa and coffee from the west, and palm kernels from the eastern region of the country. Things, however, took a different turn after the end of the Nigerian Civil War in 1970. All focus and attention moved from agriculture to the commercialization of crude oil. Shell Darcy Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria, a consortium of Shell and British Petroleum, was given a license to explore oil all over the territory of Nigeria. However, the original 920,000 square kilometers acreage allotted to the company in the original license was subsequently reduced on about two occasions. In 1937, the company began to carry out its exploration duties. Shell BP, in the pursuit of commercially available petroleum, began production in 1958 and were soon joined by a host of other foreign oil companies, Mobile Oil, Chevron, Ajip Oil, Health, Gulf Oil, and Texaco in the 1960s after Nigeria gained its independence. Today, Nigeria is one of the leading suppliers of oil to Western Europe and is the eighth largest supplier of crude oil to the United States. Nigeria's oil supplies to the United States reached 90,000 barrels per day as of April 2020. So what are the negative impacts of oil discovery in the Niger Delta? Since the discovery of oil in Nigeria, serious concerns have been raised over the impacts of oil pollution, particularly in the Niger Delta region. The foreign companies in their bid to search for and extract oil from the soil were found were grossly negligent about the havoc they were causing to the lands. Oil spills became the order of the day making the once evergreen lands look like deserts. The people of Niger Delta majorly farmed and fished as a source of livelihood until the foreign companies came and destroyed their farming lands as well as contaminated their waters in their quest for oil. This is perhaps the most significant loss in the memories of the people. Oil pollution has caused grave dangers and damage to the environment which consequently affects the lives of local communities and ethnic groups such as the Ogoni and the Ijo. Amnesty International, a non-governmental organization focused on human rights, reported in 2009 that pollution and environmental damage caused by the oil industry in the Nanja Delta have resulted in violations of the right to health and a healthy environment. The right to an adequate standard of living, including the right to food and water, and the right to gain a living through work for hundreds of thousands of people. Nigeria's own National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency, NOSDRA, recorded 3,203 oil spills in the Niger Delta region between 2006 and 2010. Highlights of the negative effects of oil pollution and spills include 
contamination of water bodies, destruction of farmlands, reduction of infant mortality, danger to aquatic life, loss of properties, loss of lives, loss of livelihood. Aside from the obvious impact of oil pollution, there has also been quite a number of human rights abuses carried out against those protesting against oil pollution. In 1999, Human Rights Watch reported that the Nigerian security forces have beaten, detained or even killed people who were involved in protests over oil companies' activities and individuals who have called for compensation for environmental damage and that multinational oil companies are complicit in abuses. One of such notable victims of this brutality was Kensaro Iwa. Kenule Bisin, popularly known as Kensaro Iwa, was a well-known Nigerian author and television producer, but the position most associated with him was his role as president of the Movement for the Survival of Ogoni People, MUSOP an organization set up to defend the environmental and human rights of the Ogoni people who live in the Niger Delta. Since the Royal Dutch Shell started exploration in 1958, over $700 billion worth of oil has been extracted from the Niger Delta. Particularly, an estimated $30 billion worth of oil has been extracted from the Ogoni land in the Niger Delta. But what did the Ogoni citizens get in return? Nothing but a ravaged environment devoid of life and hope. The farmers and fishermen who predominantly occupied this land received little except farmlands and rivers that were once fertile turned into contaminated fields from oil spills and acid drain. In January 1993, Kensaruiwa gathered about 300,000 Ogoni to protest peacefully to demand a share in oil revenues and some form of political autonomy. Mosop also asked the oil companies to begin environmental restoration as well as pay compensation for past damage. In May 1994, Saruiwa, who had been briefly imprisoned many times before, was arrested in his home and jailed along with other Mosop leaders in connection with the brutal murder of four Ogoni leaders. There existed tension between these chiefs and the Mosop group, but Mosop denied having any involvement with the killings. Although not formally charged, they were imprisoned, tortured, and denied access to families, friends, legal representation, and medication. Amnesty International issued a statement that Saruiwa's arrest was part of the continuing suppression by the Nigerian authorities of the Ogoni People's Campaign against the oil companies and declared Saruiwa a prisoner of conscience held because of his non-violent political activities. Meanwhile, the Nigerian military, searching ostensibly for those directly responsible for the killings, took control of Ogoni land, reportedly subjecting the people to mass arrest, rape, execution, and the burning and looting of their villages. A military tribunal in October 1995 tried and convicted Kensaroiwa of murder. Governments and citizens' organizations worldwide condemned the trial as fraudulent and urged the General Sonia Bacha led federal military government to spare Saruiwa's life. They also called upon Shell to intervene, but it could not get involved in the legal process in Nigeria. The company issued a statement in response to the confirmation of the death sentences which acknowledged that a letter had been sent to Abacha asking for clemency. On November 10, 1995, Saruiwa and his eight co-defendants were hanged despite international appeals for leniency. There was international condemnation and outrage against both the military and Shell. The only crime Saruiwa and his colleagues had committed was to demand sound environmental practices and to ask for compensation as well as restoration for the destruction of Ogoni territories. The Ogoni cause has since been upheld by other Ogoni people living in exile with the late Kensarewa's family at the forefront.
After the death of General Sonia Bacha in 1998, Ogoniland was still predominantly militarized and not much had changed in terms of remedying the damage done to the region. There was a long-standing call for an independent body to carry out an assessment of the extent of damage done as that was the first step to any form of real restoration. The Nigerian government finally succumbed in 2006 and invited the United Nations Environment Program UNEP, to carry out an environmental assessment study of Ogoniland. The Shell Petroleum Development Company Joint Venture of Nigeria funded the report and provided data. After two years of study, the UNEP project team submitted its report which contained science-backed evidence of massive environmental pollution and degradation with serious consequences for biodiversity conservation. Over nine years after the submission of the UNEP report, the various expected actions necessary to facilitate the commencement of the cleanup and remediation program are still at the preparatory stages. Thus, recent doubts about the commitment of stakeholders to the project, their serial assurances notwithstanding. Today, the prolonged delay in the cleanup of the oil polluted region of Niger Delta has added a new layer of hardship to the people. Since the local community resorted to poisoned waters for regular hygiene, hand washing with contaminated water may halt the ongoing fight against the present coronavirus pandemic. So, has Nigeria's oil been a blessing or a curse? Let us know in the comments. Would you like to know more about Ken Sarowiwa? Do check out our next video.